When's the play, John? Second time. Second time back. How you doing? I'm doing good. A little stressed out. See what happened to your <laughs> We uh. The uh, blue tire put too much pressure on the other tire and seized the bearing, so we're stuck in Canada. Forever? It's gonna seem like it. No, nah, two days. Ho hopefully, not more than two days. Now, how has it been so far on tour with Glenn Nezik? <laughs> it's uh, definitely been uh, like a movie almost. It's crazy every single night. You know, it's our uh, first crossover metal tour, if you will, so. Uh, it's been a little, a little different for us, but I feel uh, confident in how we're doing. How is your, I guess, give some accounts of, you know, some of your experiences with Glenn. Has he been a good guy? What kind of stuff has he done, said? Uh, with us, he's been nothing but awesome. He, uh, I guess, everything I've witnessed with him has been really, he's been a good dude, but, uh, I just one of the one of the first days of tour. He uh, ran into our dressing room and was all excited and telling us, uh, you know, welcome to the tour and all that. So that was very, very cool of him to do. And I guess from what we know, he he's the one that put us on this tour. So we very we feel very uh, very uh, just lucky and just happy to be here. Now, do you have an idea why he's uh, I guess so mysterious? <laughs> So reclusive when it comes to, I guess, press or people. Yeah, I mean, that's his thing. I don't know. It seems to be working for him. So, cool. <laughs> I'm not too sure. How have the audience is taken to you guys in this tour? Uh, I think everybody's kind of seems like everyone's kind of taking a step back and like, well, what is this band type thing? But afterwards, people are always coming up to us, and that makes me feel good. It makes me feel like we're accomplishing something being out here on this kind of tour. Since the last interview we did, <laughs> give me a, give me a couple just crazy fucked up things that have happened to Enzo Play. Yeah. Uh, we parted ways with our uh, very long time drummer. That was probably the most fucked up thing that's happened to us. He uh, was uh, dipping into our our cash our cash flow there, so we had to send him home. That set us back. Then we got our new drummer Art, which is nothing but awesome. So that's probably every tour seems to be something, but. I guess that was the, the craziest thing. How did you find out he was uh, he was for Red handed. So uh, Nick just saw him take it. We called him on it, emptied his bag, found the money. It's that. <laughs> did he get a a royal winds of plague beating? Not nah, before we were even done going through his shit here. He was down the street taking. He took off, man. He knew he was gone. So probably for the better, you know. It's more, more of a shocking thing, more than an anger thing. It's like, wow, you know, somebody you grew up with and then they shiest you like that, so, yeah, that's yeah, rough. What are some of the other things you've seen on the road that you just could not believe? Things I've seen on the road? Uh, a lot of retarded people, I guess. Like, I like to sit, I don't get too much involved with a party, but I like to sit back and watch and some of the, some of the way people act is insane. As far as, I mean, anywhere from just drunk stupidity to crazy egos to people that think they are Satan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is pretty, pretty wild, man. People call you guys the bleeding through knockoff band. They call you guys posers. They call you guys all kinds of names. Yeah. Um, what's your response to the naysayers who claim you aren't real, you aren't true? Um, well, I'm gonna put it this way, they're online talking shit, we're out here living this, we live in a van every day, we're not getting a bunch of money, we're barely making ends meet, I don't think it's more real than that man, we're fucking, you know, in our 20s and we could very well be at home doing other things, making money and that, but we decided to do this and sticking it out, we've been in a van now since 2003, I think that's quite a long time that we've been doing this, uh, so I don't know, people, people are gonna say shit no matter what, and we're, we're doing well, we're doing fine, we're having fun, so that's all that really matters to us. Are there any bands or people who I guess are in kind of big places who, who have been talking negatively about you? Probably. <laughs> uh, bands in bigger places that, I don't know, I think, I think we get along with everybody for the most part. There might be some people here and there, but it's everywhere you go, I guess. Now, somebody leaked a picture of your keyboardist. Uh, 
What happened there? Uh, as far as I know, it's an ex-boyfriend thing. What can you do? <laughs> it, is is he being is he in the process of being sued by the Winter Plague legal uh, team? I, not not that I know. I guess that's something to look into, but it made us it probably probably made us some money in the long run. So okay. <laughs> gotta look at it in a positive light, I guess. Any other things that I guess you want to achieve in the coming years? Uh, when we set this, when we set out to do this band, you know, we never it would have guessed we would even be in the spot we are. So we're just thankful for everything up to now, and anything that has to come is just more of a bonus. So I guess we don't really have any long-term goals. We're just kind of taking it day by day and seeing what happens for us. Are you guys big on conspiracies at all? What kind of conspiracies? Conspiracies, I guess, that involve population control, that involve human behavior, political um, systems. My, my thing with that is uh, I feel there's so many sides to stories and I don't know who to believe, but I definitely think there's more more to the big picture than, than what the public knows. So, who knows, man? It's a crazy world. Are you at all interested in certain issues or like... <laughs> uh, to be honest, man, I'm more I'm more worried about my own life. Yeah, I don't really have time to dwell on that kind of stuff. I think it's interesting as shit, and I like to I like to, to to read about it and stuff. But for the most part, no, not really. <laughs> give me some, I guess, books or bands or people who we like to just give a little shout out to, a little plug before we go. Some bands, huh? Well, let's see, we got a, we got our boys stick your guns out in Europe right now. Uh, the first time over there, hopefully they're doing good. Uh, Blink Through just put out a new record. Wish the best on, on that record. It's pretty good. So uh, definitely top top my my past favorites. Let's see who else we got. Bands, man. Why can't I think right now of my friends' bands? We got Suicide Silence Cell doing their thing. They're killing it. Uh, I don't know. It was, all, all, <laughs> all our friends' bands are doing good. Right now, so we couldn't be happier with that. That's awesome, man. We're all kind of came up in the same. Same situation, same scene, same time zone, and everything's doing good. One yeah. last Danzig tour story Let's, before we go. Give me a good one. Danzig tour story. You got any Danzig tour stories? Tommy, come tell a Danzig tour story. No? I don't even know. Come here, Tommy. Now that I'm not going on the record, right? <laughs> I'll have a story. I'm trying to think of one. The skeleton witch one was awesome. Yeah, I told that. The one where you came down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna fucking chicks and get fucked up. Right. <laughs> direct quote, it's all about fucking chicks and getting fucked up. How's that? That's a direct quote. From, from Glenn Danzig. I don't know if I should be saying that, but... <laughs> no, that's cool. No. Nobody wants that hard times anyway. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody.